This week on Cosmo Times. We got plenty of jobs. Yep, interesting jobs. From designers to dancers. It's time to hit the office in our Cosmo cities. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Cosmo Times. And today's episode is all about jobs. More precisely, the most interesting jobs. Yep, that's right. It's all about this right here. It's all about this. What are you talking about? I mean, I have like one of the most important jobs in the world, right? I'm a, I'm a TV host. I interview famous people, and honestly, people love me. Oh, I guess so, but how hard do you work? <laughs> the hardest. Well, we will see, because our word on the street question this week is who do you think is the hardest working person? I'm literally 4 million percent sure I'm on the top of that list. New York is full of hardworking people, but who tops the list for people that live in the city? I'm hitting the streets to find out. Who is the hardest working person that you know? I would say my dad. He works for an architecture firm and just recently got a raise, worked really hard for it for 25 years, so really proud of him. My girlfriend, actually. And why your girlfriend? Uh, basically, we live in a we live in a basement, and it's you know we're, I'm trying to go back to college, and in order to make funds meet, she's willing to do whatever it takes when it comes to work. Myself, I drive a minimum of 200 miles a day from Dutchess County down to my job. My grandfather. He was in the army, retired, took care of his family, gave his wife and kids a wonderful time, and never stopped. I think Ryan Seacrest is probably the hardest working guy with all the PR he's doing. You can't really think of too many people that are really that hard work and they usually have other people delegate all the work. Well, I guess the president, he's the hardest working. I think he really tries very hard to get things um, into the system and, and they fight against him all the time. Hardest working person I know would probably be my old man. Talk to me about well, he was a blue-collar worker, born and raised in Queen, Brooklyn, and I was raised in Queens by him, taught me ethic, and, uh, you know, just how to work for your money. The Big Apple is full of hard workers, and people idolize those who've been working for many years to get great at their craft. Now, as for me, I totally respect my mom. I think she's been working for a long time and I really honor what she's done. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens. Who do you think is the most hardworking person in your life? Your mom, your dad, your boss? Let's go for a walk here in Melbourne and see what the answer is. Why your dad? Because he does everything to provide for our family. Uh, probably mum. Yep, yeah, I think yeah, she does most of the providing for us. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to concur. Yeah, say mum, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably my mum. Yeah. I think my dad, because he goes to work like really early in the morning, comes home really late at night, somehow manages to find time to spend time with us as well, and on the weekends, and yeah. Um, my dad. <laughs> That's the most hard working person I know. Yeah, my father probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I would say my father, yeah. Probably my dad. 
Yeah. Actually, my former boss, I would probably say. Yes, he was like almost 24-7 in the office or at the event location, so I would say him, yeah. I'll probably where I work there, the CEO there, does all the work to make the place work well, so yeah, he's the, the big boy and does all the work, so he's good. Probably my PhD supervisor. Why well, I say my dad this way, I guess. He's, yeah, he's a builder, so he made his own business and all that kind of stuff, watching that grow, grow up and stuff. My mum was the most hard person, working person I know. A lot of people have said that. Why do you think mums are the most hard working? Uh, in, well, in my mum's case, she actually comes from Thailand. So for her, she grew up in poverty, so th that's the only way she knows how to live, is to work really hard and constantly keep working so she can strive for a better life. So. So no surprises there that people in Melbourne think their mum and their dad are the hardest working people, often juggling busy professional lives with coming home and looking after the family. I'm Andrew Moon, now it's back to Shanghai. Finding a job that you're happy with is very important. Not only do you need that steady income, but you want to love what you do. So our question for this week word on the street is, who is the hardest working person that you know? Let's go find out. Do 感觉那是非常辛苦的一个体验 刚毕业嘛，这工作啊，自己都比较有要求，所以一直很努力。所以我觉得我是一个挺努力的人。工作目的是要养家嘛，然后赚钱嘛。另一方面，确实我很喜欢这个行业，所以做的时候也是有些快
Here in New York City, the people are as unique as their professions. And today, we're checking in with one craftsman who's combining fashion and function. Let's go explore. From the outside, 242 Grant looks like a boutique store in the heart of Williamsburg. But take a peek inside and you'll find owner and designer Perry Gargano hard at work in his studio. He opened the store five years ago and sells jewelry and home accessories, which are hand-built and locally cast in Brooklyn. For Gargano, his job is anything but your typical nine to five. Sometimes it's like playing. The good days is, is like when it is, you come in here and you play and you put things together and they work out. The bad days is when you're working on something you've been working on for three days and it sort of falls apart in your hands. But then you do it again and, and hopefully it gets better. For Perry, being able to create something out of nothing has always been part of the job description. He's worked as a toy inventor, production designer for theater and film, and an exhibit designer for the Bronx Zoo and the Museum of Natural History. While he's had no formal training in jewelry design, he was exposed to many of the elements that now make up his everyday work. We were doing a lot of casting, fabricating, metal work to do installations in the, for instance, in the Bronx Zoo, we were doing, we were casting these large skulls and little things and, um, you know, it just, it just seemed pretty natural progression. Despite how many man hours you put in, inspiration works in mysterious ways. For Perry, the idea of his successful seaware collection came when he least expected it, when he was taking a break. The whole, this whole tentacle thing started with uh, my appetizer. Like many years ago, I was eating with a friend of mine and I ordered it and I was like, I ate it and then I ordered it again and then I actually took it back to my shop and cast it. Wow, that's and, uh, incredible. Yeah. So from that casting came a very rudimentary mold and then it, I kept finessing it and I, kept, I just saw so many possibilities from it. So there's a finished spoon. And this is part of the home line, um, which includes, you know, a cheese knife. Um, it's got a can opener that actually opens on both ends, so you can open your, your bottle opener from this end, or you can actually open it from the claw end. That's um, great. Um, we got our corkscrew opener, tentacle corkscrew opener. I wouldn't want to open the bottle. This is on the top. I would just yeah. be like, it's just cool. Stick I'll it just, in there. Yeah, I'll just keep it closed forever and ever. <laughs> These are just like little reverse bobblehead badge figures. So they're um, they have uh, little heads and then their and their bodies move. They're different um, bodies that I found and made different heads for them. So now they become just these other. Um, they have their, their own little character and their own. Head. And this is definitely a fun part of your job that you get to design what's on the head, right? Yeah. I get to just, I guess I get to design, yeah, what they are and whatever little backstory I'd like to add to them and things like that. And then people have their own, so. Um, this is a new bracelet concept. Um, it can be fitted towards any size and it has a little hangman's knot and um, it can be, if it ever loosens up, you just simply pull it out. Wow. It runs through the spine of the actual product, and then it can be taken out and refitted and resized. This was a piece that I actually thought of like what I would like, um, which is always a nice way to get to something as opposed to just designing from, from uh, scratch. Whether you're new to the work world or looking for a fresh start, finding a unique job is easy if you follow your passions and are open to exploration. I think if you expose yourself to as much as you can in a field, then you can figure out what you like or what you don't like, as opposed to being like, oh, I want to do this, and just kind of like without knowing what it takes to actually do it, so. Totally. You gotta get your feet wet you gotta get what you're your working feet with, yeah, yeah, for sure. And see if you got the chops for it, you know. As we've seen here at 242 Grand, having a unique job is all about passion, dedication, and putting your own spin on your craft. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clements.
Well, the Perry Gargano really is the jack of all trades of creativity. Well, you know, Mancy, I'm a pretty versatile myself. You know, in addition to my day job, I play several instruments, and I'm a world-renowned DJ. Did you say DJ? You know, that's the perfect segue to our LA City Search, where they found a DJ that really does it all. I mean, a DJ that works harder than I do, I'm gonna have to see it to believe it. So you don't believe me? Bring it? Today we are having DJ Thrive with us. Tell us a little bit, how did you get started? I got started with uh, my younger brother. He actually got into music first. And, um, and I saw how he was really into it and, and how he would perform and, and have the crowd entertain. Mm -hmm. And so little by little I started learning from him. Your private uh, DJs, you know, for private events, uh, whether it be a house party, uh, and then you have your club DJs, and then you also have your like battle DJs, and you have your radio station DJs. Each DJ has a different sound. I treat all the events the same way. Uh, perfect example. I also DJ for Universal City Walk, Five Towers. I DJ for them. And I've been with them going on three years already. And um, when I perform there, I perform the same way as I would be performing at a regular private party. To me, there's no difference. I treat them all the same. Mm -hmm. And another thing about me, I don't consider myself just a DJ. I consider myself a performer. Oh, and yeah. the reason why I consider myself a performer is because I'm performing, I'm not just like, you know, playing a song, play, and then stop, uh -huh. play and stop. Now I'm, hit, I'm hitting play, I'm mixing music, I'm having uh -huh. a good time with everybody, the crowd, I'm talking to them, we're all going back and forth, we're all having a great time. Whether it be a little party, like I said, or a big, or a big event, like you know, with the studios. And when I play, I try to play like different genres because every genre is different mm -hmm. and so you have to know how to get kind of creative with every different genre and know how to transition from one genre to a different genre mm -hmm. so you want to be able to do all that at home you don't want to do it when you're doing it live mm -hmm. performing in front of a, a crowd because it might not sound good mm -hmm. and you'll see the reaction in the, in the audience and people might mm -hmm. sit down What do you do while you are like uh, working on a radio? Do you play music? Do you talk, uh, or do you do both at the same time? I do both. Whoa. And I try talk, doing the talking part. That's I'm hard. learning. Yeah, I'm learning because there's a lot involved when you're talking. You know, it's it's about knowing how to go in and mm -hmm. then out right away mm -hmm. when you're doing the talk break, as opposed to just con mm -hmm. continuous talk because mm -hmm. you don't want to bore the people. Mm -hmm. You want to just say something really quick and go back straight to the music because mm -hmm. people are tuning in because of the music. Um, I actually have two careers on top of DJ and I also work in IT and I love IT and I love DJing too. I graduated from Cal State Northridge and I, and I majored in information technology and systems and operations management. So I have two, two jobs, I have my day job and I have my night job. And so to be able to combine both, which is music and computers, which is what DJs use, you know, and IT professionals, you know, obviously work at computers, so on and so forth. Uh, to be able to combine both is what makes me happy, is my passion, and I love doing it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching the show. I'm Shaori, reporting from Los Angeles. If you don't want the hard working fun to stop, then don't change that dial. Because after the break, we work out a dance number in this week's Shanghai City Search. Welcome back. Yeah, we just saw plenty of interesting people with interesting jobs. So guess who's coming up for our Shanghai City Search? I mean, I want to say me, 
but I don't remember the Shanghai team actually interviewing me for that, so I'm gonna say probably not. You know what, Saul? I think you should add detective to your job description. You know what, Mansi? Maybe I will. Maybe I will add detective to my job description list. Anyways, well, let's check out this week's Shanghai City Search. I am sure you'll have a dancing good time. What? Really? Nice. I'm off of that dancer. Playing some of the most diverse roles in Chinese performance art, like the lead in China's Black Swan, The Crested Ibis, or the struggling office worker Pu Shang in the hit show Let's Dance, in Prince Cao Zhi in the epic period production The Goddess and the Dreamer, Wang Jiachun is on his way to becoming one of the country's most respected contemporary dancers. 大家好，我是王家俊。您现在正在收看的是《城市节拍》。But Jia Jun came from humble beginnings, eagerly awaiting his breakthrough chance to shine on stage. It came in the form of the theatrical production Wild Zebra. 我接触的第一部舞剧，我并不是在里边跳的男主角，但是我已经埋下了一颗我要当主角的种子。那个时候是张继刚拍的《野斑马》。当时看到那匹野斑马，北京来的演员，我当时觉得我以后应该就是这个样子。那恰恰没想到这个缘分，在我进入了舞团之后，然后我就得到了一次可以学习野斑马的角色，就已经奠定了我以后以双人舞为基础的一个男主角的方向走的。Well, off to a good start. It wasn't until the production *The Goddess and the Dreamer* that Wang Jiajun rose to national fame. Under immense pressure from the director, Jiajun was forced to push his limits in understanding of dance, culminating in a spectacular performance that drew critical and artistic attention. With Tong Rui, the director, before he had some collaboration, he invited me to Zhengzhou Film Festival. 拍一个舞剧叫《水月落神》，但我没想到后面的问题一个接一个。今天给你个中国古典舞，明天给你个问题，你要学汉唐舞。我觉得我挑了一个男主角，已经突破了很大一步，对我来说迈了很长一步。又是什么汉唐，又是中国古典舞，而且这部舞剧当中最主要是他还让我开口了，别的跟麦跳舞，然后在某个点上他要开口念诗。就除了跳舞之外，还有一百个紧张在心里边，千万不要在念诗的时候错，而且你还有念出什么情感来。这对我后面来说，我就是很能够知道自己的位置在哪里。我其实是个可以承受这些压力的一个人。你能否每一年都保持好你的高水平？每一年是否都可以拿出你的高水整出来？因为每年就像我们歌舞团，每年都有新的演员进来，他们都会看着你是歌舞团首席，你今天是，你明天是不是还是？明天也许有新的演员进来，比你更优秀，跳得比你更好，而且你年龄一直在成长，你的体能或者是你的软开度一直在下降的同时，你能够保持你的状态。比得过新的进来演员之后，你要承受更多的压力。所以，如果我今天站在舞台上的话，我一定要特别了解自己有什么。就我特别感谢同瑞导演给我这样的一次机会。From stardom, Wang Jiajun moved to the avant-garde in the critically acclaimed show *The Crested Ibis*. Based on central China's iconic yet endangered bird, the production was billed as China's own Swan Lake. For Jiajun, the tale of beauty and conservation gave him the chance to dance a role immersed in emotion. Because the Swan Lake, to be honest, has actually. 承载了很大的意义。它不仅仅已经是像我们以往跳的，就是一个美的作品。它里面还有一个环保题材在里边，又跟以前又不一样了，又不仅仅是男女两个人相爱的一个简单的事情了。
我觉得就是这样一个舞剧接一个舞剧，然后每一个舞剧我都觉得我突破不了了，我没办法完成的时候，我就踏过了这一步，于是我又能够拿着这一份经验拿回来，拿到自己身上，进入下一个舞剧的排练。我心想，如果可以站在舞台上一天，我就完美的去呈现这一天。Watching Jia Jun's career blossom over the course of a decade, the director from Crested Ibis saw star potential from the beginning. 在过去的这个这么多十几年当中，啊，从学生到演员，开始还是懵懵懂懂。但是二十五岁以后，我有一个印象，他去担当了《水月洛神》里面的曹植，然后童老师对他有很严格的这样的一个经历。回来以后，我觉得有点脱胎换骨。那么从家俊这个本身对艺术的追寻和他这个对艺术上的造诣来说，家俊应该是在中国舞蹈界是一个非常优质的男演员，这个也是难能可贵的，这是我们中国舞蹈演员当中非常难得的人才。On stage, Wang Jiajun is one of China's most promising contemporary dancers. But off stage, he's just your normal guy. 之前呢，我刚进来的时候，我是作为一个新演员，然后他就是像呃我们团的首席演员嘛，然后我们就对他是那种很崇拜。但是就发现呃接触下来，他很很随和，没有说什么像别人看眼中那种嗯不好接触啊那种感觉。生活中的话还会。就是很百变，他很喜欢尝试各种不同的东西，像拍艺术照，一般的男孩肯定就是帅帅的，像他会拍一些什么水下的美人鱼啊，呵呵然后突然又赤裸上身，就变成肌肉猛男啊，就很百变。Wang Jiajun is a dancer in heart and in practice. Now in some of the country's biggest and most innovative productions, Jiajun shows no signs of slowing down. And with Crested Ibis wrapped up, we certainly await his next big role. So don't change that channel. Because there's more Cosmo times to come. As we check out what's been happening in the entertainment scene in this week's Creative Source. Don't go away. Got an interesting time today talking about jobs. Pretty inspirational stuff. Oh, speaking of inspiration, we've got creative source coming up. It's fine, Bobby. I'm always looking for something to take you to that next level. Creative source is next level. Phoebus Chung opened his menwares boutique Mr. Nova downtown in a classic Shanghainese lane house, complete with courtyard and cafe. While his shop is nestled in on quiet Wuyuan Road, the interior is a bright, fun, and colorful place. It's young and hip, and features a pretty cool mix of vintage and new designs. 就是我们的着重观点是风格不是去追随潮流的，而是去表达自我。While men's fashion is often simple, black, and basic, Phoebus adds a bit of spice to the look with everything from ball caps to watches. Glasses, umbrellas, and cufflinks. So, 这边的风格主要是以呃偏雅皮的这种风格，注重于质感，注重于裁剪，注重于它的工艺。雅皮这种风格呢，也是说呃不是特别张扬，但是又是很很不羁的。When it comes to men's fashion, there are a few accessories which can really bring the whole look together. 比如说像这种规格的手拿包。
它能放一个笔记本电脑和一个 iPad， 包括你的钱包、眼镜，基本上都能收纳，而且你拿起来也比较时尚。所以我们不太建议男生再去用那种笨重的皮包出街。s m a r t e r n o t 是一个英国的品牌，它的整体的风格是以皇家的学院风为主。然后像 Steve b o n d o 它就是西班牙的一个手工品牌，它的所有的包带都是很硬朗的，呃，牛皮切割，然后也比较适合搭配商务的这种着装。像这个是，呃，也是传统的一种雍容风格，然后它背后有两个搭扣，你可以里面有一根皮带，你可以侧背，然后也可以手拿，然后商务休闲都可以使用，皇家的海军风格。这块表是最新引进的一个品品牌叫 David Design， 它的创始人的名字就叫 David， 然后他是伦敦奥运会的徽章设计师，也是伦敦奥运会里面唯一一个中国的设计师。这款钟表的设计是非常非常特别的，它是按照一个宇宙的这种星星空的这种元素来做的表盘的设计，表盘的切面，然后它的把冠设计在下下方，然后最中心的位置，这也是所有的机械表最不同的一个地方。很多腕表它的把冠在这边会这样的话会容易割到手，这样的话就不会存在这个现象。而且这种棕色的皮表带是百搭的。嗯，这种表呢，就是会跟传统的这种细呃皮表带的腕表不太一样，它是会有一点点运动风，嗯，但是完全是可以搭配到搭配正装使用。表它最大的乐趣就是你可以根据你的着装换不同颜色的表带，而且拆装是非常非常方便。它的表盘是按照潜水的这种风格去设计的，没有明显的指针的刻度，表盘的设计也是比较简约，比较适合搭配于淡色系的着装使用。我平时在春夏的时候是最喜欢穿的就是这样的鞋型，因为 l o f e r 本身就是呃穿穿着起来很方便，然后天气冷的时候你可以搭配搭配一双条纹的或者是呃就是彩色的花袜子。如果要是天气比较暖的，像夏天的时候你可以光脚去穿，甚至里面穿一双船袜这样。然后接下来推荐一款就是 Monk Straps， 然后它分为两种，就是 Double Monk 和 Single Monk。这款是 single mark， 就是一个搭扣的。这种鞋的款式也是在意大利的 PT Uomo 的男装展会上最常见到的一款。它不管是搭配牛仔裤也好，还是搭配正装裤，都是非常好的选择。Handbags, shoes, and watches are pretty fundamental to fashion, but his shop features so much more. It's all done in a cool young way, but still contains an air of maturity and refinement. 在目前中国的这种男士的这种着装一直处于被压抑的这种状态。而希望每个人能把自己自我内心的那种表达释放出来。For a lot of us men, we're not really sure what we want when it comes to style, and Mr. Nova is the perfect place to go for a few good ideas. Chatsaw University is welcoming the fourth annual Oasis concert on its campus, bringing out young independent bands from across China. 今年已经是第四年办这个活动了，然后总共请到了四支乐队。我们举办这个活动就是希望可以呃邀请到呃全国各地的更多的好的乐队到我们学校来演出，可以带给大家更多文艺方面的一些福利吧。我觉得在那个学校里面参加这种音乐节意义还是很不一样的。一个就是它是一个免费的一个活动，还有就是你可以和就是学校里面很亲密的一些朋友，然后共同体验这种这种嗯、呃、摇滚乐的那种很嗨，然后很狂。I come here to listen to some band, some I've heard of, some I didn't, but that's okay because the atmosphere here is very high. It was a night of music and fun in a perfect way to welcome in the warm weather. In collaboration with the world top institution of musical art, the Juilliard School, the British International School of Shanghai Pudong and Pushi Campus is becoming one of the ten inaugural Nord Anglia schools. Launching an innovative arts curriculum, the Juilliard Nord Anglia Performing Arts Program this September. Initially, it'll be focused on music,、uh, and in particular,、uh, curriculum music. So the the teaching that takes place in the classroom. So our teachers and the、uh, the experts from Juilliard are working together to further enhance what we do in the classroom. So it's music for all, but also a chance for our top quality musicians to develop their skills and to go as far as their talent can take them.
engage if, if someone is very interested in pursuing that. It, it does take quite a bit of practice, but to simply enjoy music and enjoy lessons is really the key. The Performing Arts program will be later extended to drama, dance, and after-school activities, providing more learning opportunities for students. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our job-inspired edition of Cosmo Times. Right, so get up, stop being lazy, and get a job. I'm talking to you, five-year-olds. <gasps> what kind of a motivational ending is that? What, like we're supposed to be motivational now? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, um... I hope you can all inspire to be as awesome as I am. And if that's not motivation enough for you, then I don't really know what is. I'm sure your star just soared to another level. See you guys next week. Ciao. You know, I'm looking forward to this Shanghai Shanghai You know, that's a lot of shuds and studs in one line. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I don't know what's my line. <laughs> Bring it? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a hustle. I'm sorry. It's a hustle. Right. Sure, sure.